Praise God, dear heart. Thank you for joining me again today on Holy Ghost Fire Talk. I'm your host, Evangelist King, pastor at House Shalom, where we simply building a peaceful house for God's glory. You can tune in to Holy Ghost Fire Talk live, live broadcasts every Monday and Friday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time by calling our listener number 415 325 0729 or go to our website at howshalom.org slash radio <clears throat> or be sure to install our uh, mo free mobile apps on your Android or your Apple device uh, Deliverance TV and sh Shalom Shalom Radio but go to the website thechildrensmite.org slash free apps and you'll see a link to the Android or and Apple Market to install the app on your mobile phone. Praise God. Today, dear Jehovah, I want to talk about the resurrection of the dead. The Word of God tells us about the resurrection of the dead, and it's in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. You know, I was a teenager when the Holy Spirit first brought this, this uh, uh, chapter. Um, to my attention, and, uh, and he gave me understanding, and, and, and I rejoice, I rejoice, even to this day, I rejoice, and the only reason why you're not going to rejoice, because you feel that if Jesus was to come now, you would not go back with him, so that's the reason why in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, you cannot rejoice, because of your lifestyle, the, ch the choices that you make, and that is in disobedience to God, so so this won't be so much a good news for you. But dear heart, you can repent. You can repent now and sin no more and get delivered. And then, then First Corinthians 15 chapter would be great news for you. So it says in verse one: More, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive, in which you stand. Now remember now, the Apostle Paul is talking to the church, the body of Christ Jesus. You know, the first Corinthians, they did not fall behind in any gift of the Holy Spirit. But the only problem was, due to their lifestyle, their, their life practices in committing sins, secret sins, they misused the gifts of God. So that's the reason why Apostle Paul so sternly had to correct the brethren in Corinth. So he always first share with them the good things that they are doing. He just don't bring up the wrong things that they're doing first. He bring up the good things because, because the gospel of Jesus Christ were preached to the Corinth Corinthians. And they received it. And they stood. At first they, they stood in God's word. They stood in the word of God. What was preached to them. They stood in it. They held on to it. That's the reason why again. They did not lack in any gift of the spirit. Because initially wholeheartedly. They, they uh, sought the Lord. Verse 2 say. By which also you are saved. If you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. That's why the scripture said that when one endures into the end, they are saved. So when they heard the word of God being preached to them, they received it and they stood in it and they were saved. So now you have to hold fast to God's word. Hold fast to that which have been preached to you, the word of God that have been preached to you. Because when you, if you let it go, dear heart, then your belief was in vain. It's not, it didn't profit you anything because you, you did not endure until the end. You know, that's terrible. That's terrible boy, to be in a race and you're running great in that race. And you get almost to the finish line and you stop and don't go no further. That's just terrible. All that hard work that you put into reaching that point was in vain. So again, that's why the scripture tells us, unless we endure unto the end, we would not be saved. 
Verse 3 say, For I deliver to you first of all that which I also received. See, Apostle Paul could only deliver to God's children in Corinth what he had received. Any minister of God can only de deliver to you what they themselves have received. And the Apostle Paul received that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Now you, you could not get Paul to doubt to doubt what God had done for him. His testimony where he met the Lord. And the Lord changed him. Filled him with, with, with himself. Put love in Apostle Paul's heart. He was Saul at the time. Put love in Saul's heart for the people. God just transformed him. So what the Apostle Paul said, I'm only delivering to you that which I have. Again, at your heart, I'm only delivering to you what I have, what Christ has put in my heart. For, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So every child of God, in their heart, they know that Jesus Christ died for their sins according to the scripture. And he was buried, and he rose again on the third day according to the scripture, according to the word of God. That is in every child of God's heart. And five, and that Christ was seen by Peter, then by the twelve. Six, and after that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. So at that time, there was over 500 brethren who actually saw Jesus just ascend up to heaven. And at that time, I don't know how many years, could have been 20, 30 years later, some of them were still alive, but some have fallen asleep. When we die in Christ Jesus, we all, we, our body is only falling asleep. Our body is only falling asleep because our body is going to be resurrected from the dead. We are spirit. We have a soul, mind, will, emotion for this body. So when we die, in our spirit and our soul goes to the Lord. And our body is buried on earth. This body got to be resurrected. That is the great deliverance where the body is going to be resurrected. So even right now, same as Apostle Paul was telling the brethren at Corinth, it applies today. God's children, some have fallen asleep, some are still alive. We are still alive, but some have fallen asleep. That means their body is sleeping, waiting to be resurrected. Their spirit and soul is with the Lord. And then seven say, after death he was seen by James. Then by all the apostles. Eight. Then last of all he was seen by me. Also as by one born out of due time. You see. Even Jesus Christ revealed himself to the apostle Paul. Even though he was Saul at that time. You cannot get Saul to deny that. You know. When, when, whenever we have an experience. Or an encounter with Jesus Christ. No one can make us doubt it. No one can make us, make us doubt it. And you could not make the Apostle Paul doubt that Jesus Christ is alive. He, he has seen him. And, and the Apostle Paul considered himself as one that was born out of due time. And he said in verse 9, For I am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. So in his heart he always stayed low and humble. And can't consider himself the least apostle. And we know that he was not the least apostle. Because Apostle Paul in, in the New Testament had great revelation. Most of it is about him. But in his heart, he considered himself the least of the apostles. Why? Because he once persecuted the church. He was a witness when they, when they uh, stoned Stephen. You know, that kept him low and humble. Then it said in verse 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. See, we are what we are only because of the grace of God. I am what I am only because of the grace of God. 
And his grace towards me was not in vain, but I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. See, there are some children of God who labor more than other children of God. Why? Because they consider themselves to be the least of the brethren. Because maybe they done this or maybe they done that. And they consider themselves to be the least of the brethren. And they feel they have to do even more for God. Be even more tenacious to God. So don't get jealous of your brother or sister who you think is doing way more than you. You don't know where God brought them from. You don't know where God brought them from. And besides, you have that same opportunity to do the same. Have you noticed that when someone who don't really feel they did much wrong, they have a chance to do little for the Lord. And someone who feel like they've done greatly wrong, they do more for the Lord. Why? Because they know they don't deserve it. It's His grace and mercy. So they do even more for the Lord. So again, dear heart, don't be jealous of your sister and brother. Because again, you don't know where God brought them from. Let me say, therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preach and so you believe. When the Apostle Paul preached or spoke the word of God, taught the word of God, the brethren in Corinth, they believe. They believe. With all their heart, they believe. And they received and they stood in their belief in the word of God through his messengers. Twelve say, now if Christ is preached that he, had been, that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? You see how the devil brought in confusion? He brought in confusion then and that same confusion is today. Because you got some of God's children who don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. They don't believe that, the, that a resurrection day is coming where the body will take off immortality and put on immortality. Now remember Christ raised, was raised from the dead. He's the firstborn of, of, of many of the brethren. Of many brethren. The firstborn of the brethren. He was resurrected. Now, there are some people who have been raised from the dead, that's different from the resurrection. No, raised from the dead is that the person uh, came alive again. And they still got their mortal body and they're going to die again. But when you have been resurrected, and Christ Jesus is the only one who's been resurrected, that's when that mortal body is no longer mortal, but it's immortal. It can never die. So Jesus Christ is the fourth firstborn of the brethren. And do what, that's what our brethren who have gone before us, that's what they are waiting on. And then when, when our body ceases to exist on earth, then we too will be waiting to be resurrected, to put on our resurrected bodies as Christ Jesus. So the enemy had came in and, and just confused the people. They listened to the wrong voice, the wrong teachers. And remember now, even during the Apostle Paul's time, there were some great teachers. There have been men who follow under Paul's teaching and the Apostle teaching, and they went out and started doing their own thing, and they would use that knowledge. And because of teaching demons being in them, they would twist the Scripture, twist what the Word of God say. And so that's how that confusion come in. So that's why you have to be careful that you shouldn't be going on the internet listen to this person, listen, listen to that person. What's going to end up happening, you're going to get confused. And that's the evidence that you have dabbed in a, into an area or started eating something that was not um, fitting to eat. And the result of that is that confusion. So confusion came in. So the Apostle Paul said, Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, and they know he has been raised from the dead because there was many witnesses who saw him. Now how do some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? 
13, but if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Because he's the firstborn of the brethren. So if there's no resurrection of the dead, then we, we actually saying that Christ did not rise again. And you believe that Christ rose again. He's right now on the right hand side of heaven, the Father. So if Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the, uh, of the brethren, then that means that we too, when our body leaves this earth, going to be resurrected. That means we're going to take off this mortal body and put on immortality just as Jesus Christ. Even right now, we are like Christ Jesus, but we're not totally, totally like him because we're still in this flesh and blood body. Even when we die, the body had decayed, you see. So, so, so we're waiting for that resurrection day. That resurrection day when the Father said, okay, it's time, Jesus, go, go get them. And the angels stand in heaven in the middle of the air and blow that trumpet. And only those who died in Christ Jesus shall hear that sound. And they will rise in that first resurrection. And immediately they're going to put on, take off mortality and put on immortality. That way we'll be 100% just like Jesus inside and out. So 13 again say, but if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. 14, and if Christ has, is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. So if Jesus Christ has not written, risen, dear Lord, then the, the God's servants who minister his word, those are vain, empty words, useless words. We don't even need faith. Why? Because it's not going to serve us no good because Jesus has not been risen. Now that's when you say there is no resurrection of the dead. You actually saying that Jesus Christ did not rise. 15 say yes. And we are found false witness of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up. If in fact the dead do not rise. Well, if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. So, do you be careful now? You say there's not a resurrection of the dead. That those who have died in Christ, their bodies will not be resurrected. You actually is testifying falsely. You found to be a false witness of God because that's not true. Because we know for truth that Jesus Christ rose and again he sat on the right hand side of the heavenly Father where he's at right now. Right now is our high priest interceding for us who are still on this earth. 17 say, and if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile and you are still in your sin. Praise God that Christ Jesus has risen. The enemy hated when we confess Jesus is Lord. Enemy hated when we look up to him where all our help comes. We look up to Jesus Christ. When we confess out of our mouth that Jesus indeed has risen again. He hate resurrection day. He hate resurrection day. You know, there was the cross, the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's where it started. But it goes beyond that to the resurrection. And that's where power comes in, resurrection power. See, the enemy don't want you to have resurrection power. And he knows the only way you have resurrection power, you must believe that Jesus rose again. Some of you believe Jesus rose again, but you don't believe those who died in Christ Jesus shall also rise just like Christ. Come back here and get their bodies. And that body is going to change so quick in a moment, uh, uh, like a twinkling of an eye, so fast, from mortality to immortality. Praise his holy name. 
18 say, Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished if, if Christ has not risen from the dead. But praise God, he has risen from the dead. Now remember, children of God, when, they, when we die in Christ Jesus, our body just, we just fall asleep. The body just falls asleep. Our spirit and soul goes back to the Lord. But if you say there's no resurrection of the dead, then you're actually saying that Christ did not rise. So therefore, that makes our faith, faith futile. And we are still in our sins. And those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. They, they have perished. If we say that there is no re resurrection of the dead. But we know there is. 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiful. pitiful. Dear Lord, our hope and faith in Christ is forever. Not just in this life, but also in eternal life, the life to come. Our hope is in Him, in Christ Jesus. 20 say, But now, Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. You see, Christ Jesus was the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Again, that's their bodies. Their bodies are asleep. The spirit soul is with the Lord, but the body is still asleep. And that's because Christ was risen from the dead. Thank you, Lord. And all those who continue to believe in him and hold on until the end, we too shall look just like him on the outside. See, right now, dear heart, within us we look just like Jesus, but we don't look like him on the outside because we have this flesh and blood body. But it's the Father, Father wills that we look, look like him inside and out. But there's, a, there's a, a coming day when we shall look like him on the outside. Where we have our glorified body as he. That day is coming. 21 tells us, For since by man came death, that was Adam, disobeying Jesus, disobeying God, Disobeying the Father, disobeying the Holy Ghost. It brought death. It brought a spiritual death first and then a physical death. Because when God made man, he made man or made Adam, he made Adam man to live eternally. In, 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 in that state. But through disobedience and rejecting the word of God. Sin was produced, and due to sin, death came forth by man. That was Adam. So also, he continues to say, by man, this is a capital M, that is Jesus Christ. Also came the resurrection of the dead. See, Christ Jesus came to die for our sins, and not only to die for our sins, dear heart, but to be resurrected so that he would be the first few of first, firstborn to be raised from the dead. That means resurrected from the dead, where he take off his took off that mortal body and put on immortality so that we can live eternally so that we can have eternal life. If Christ had not did that, dear heart, there'd be no way that we have eternal life. When we died, we would have been just dead. But because of Jesus Christ, He came, He also came, the resurrection of the dead. We have eternal life through Christ Jesus. That's the only way that we'll live forever is through Christ Jesus. Now remember, 
his shed blood on the cross, it covers our sins to enable us to receive the resurrected, the resurrection, to be resurrected from the dead. That's resurrection power. Think, of, think about when Jesus came back here after he was resurrected. Wow, I think he stayed on earth, was it 40 or, or 50 days? And he did many miracles, many mir powerful. And the devil definitely could not touch him. He was, he was in his glory. I mean, it was awesome. Wow. Because of Christ Jesus, Jehovah, we just endure and hold out until the end. We will experience the same thing because we would be just like Jesus, not just on the inside. The inside we have his his char his character. His characteristics on the inside of but on the outside. The plan is for us to look just like Jesus. We have our glorified bodies. 22 say, for as in Adam all die. See, for in Adam the first man, physical man, due to his sin, we all die physically. Some die spiritually and some die uh, physically. Anyway, death came through and by Adam because of his disobedience. Well, even so, in Christ Jesus, all shall be made alive. We shall be made alive. Eternal life is only through Christ Jesus. Praise the living God. 23, but each one in his own order. See, there's an order. First, Christ, the first fruits. See, Christ is the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. He was resurrected first. Put on his glorified body first. And then afterwards, those who are uh, Christ at his coming, those who are Christ at his coming, then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and all power. So remember in Adam all die. But in Christ Jesus, all is in Christ Jesus, all shall be made alive. In the order, Christ first, the first few, afterward those who are who are Christ at His coming. See, Jesus coming back here, and those who are who belongs to Christ, those who those saints who have who have already died. I'm telling you, it's so quick. I mean, you know how fast you blink your eye, it will be even faster than that. Where the saints in heaven is going to put on their uh, uh, immortal body. Their, their mortal bodies on earth that was buried, it, they buried on the ground, the underground, on top of the ground, in the sea. It don't matter. Some of them bodies, that member had them created, and the ashes just thrown some everywhere under the water on top of the earth it don't matter wherever they may be only Christ Jesus knows where where their remains are and 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 fast as the eye can blink their their bodies is going to be resurrected to to join their spirit and their soul quickly and they, and they, they be coming back here with Christ Jesus and then, then those who have, have not died, who happen to still be alive at that time, they too shall be changed quickly. Quickly, dear heart. And then, then comes the end. And that's when the God going to deliver to Jesus Christ um, the kingdom to him. And going to put an end to all Rule and a and rule and authority and power of darkness and be an end to it. Twenty five say, for he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet, and the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Death is the last enemy that will be destroyed. Mm-hmm. 
he blessed enemy. That that that's because when when the Lord put all principalities, powers, and rules uh, uh, bring them to an end, then then there will be no more death. There will be no more death. Death will be will be destroyed because those spirits that's that's who they are. They kill, they steal, they destroy. They 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 are death. 27, for he has put all things under his feet, but when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Jesus Christ is accepted. 28, now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son, uh, the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Otherwise, what will they do who are baptized for the dead, if the dead do not rise at all? Why then are they baptized for the dead? And why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? See, Apostle Paul was trying to get them to see because they've been taught that there's no such thing as resurrection or dead. But yet and still, you had those that was baptizing people. They was baptizing people. But if there's no resurrection of the dead, then why are you baptizing people? Why are you baptizing people if you don't believe that Christ, that there, there is a resurrection of the dead? Verse 30 say, And why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? I affirm by the boasting in you which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. We die daily, dear heart, just like the Apostle Paul. If in the manner of men, that verse 32, I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it to me if the dead do not rise? Let us eat and drink, and for tomorrow we die. If the, if the dead does not rise, that's what he was saying. So in other words, these things... That we're doing for the Lord in obedience to Him. If we don't believe that there's a resurrection of the dead, it's all in vain. We just would rather eat, drink, and be merry than die, because ain't nothing gonna happen after you die, because there's no resurrection of the dead. But He was getting them to see that yes, there is a resurrection of the dead because of Jesus Christ, the first few, the firstborn, the first to be resurrected among many brethren. Who to be resurrected after him. 33 say do not be deceived. So that's a deception. That's a deception from the enemy. Confusion. Evil company corrupts good habits. See they was fellowshipping with, with, people, with someone who did not believe the word of God. Who did not believe what they had been taught through the apostles. They were fellowshipping with them. And by fellowship with them, they poison their mind, poison their understanding. They confused them. And they did not realize that it was the evil one deceiving them to lure them away from Christ Jesus. You have to watch your relationships, dear heart. Anyone who bring who come to you and bring not the word of God in which you receive, initially receive. The word of God and God saved you, he healed you, he delivered you, and he's keeping you, and they don't bring the word of God, then you don't fellowship with them. You love them from a distance, you love them, but you don't fellowship with them because evil company will corrupt good habits or good behavior. And that's exactly what happened to the brother in Corinth. That teaching spirit taught them that there was no such thing as a resurrection of the dead. And they did not realize when they believed that, they actually were believing that Jesus Christ did not uh, arise again. You see how subtle the devil is. The devil won't just come out plainly and tell you uh, what you truly is believing. He, he will word it another way kind of camouflage it so, so that you can't really see and understand what you really is 
understanding or seeing. <laughs> and then 34 say, Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. And that is a shame. These were children of God. Even today, children of God who knew truth, received truth, walked in truth, and then that. Then they allowed through wrong fellowship, unhealthy relationships and fellowship, the evil one, the truth of the brethren, a teaching spirit to come in and start teaching them contrary to the word of God. Therefore, by doing that, confusion enter, confuse the demon spirit. And when that spirit enter, it will take away the knowledge of God that you do have. So that's why Apostle Paul say then and now, because the Holy Spirit is speaking expressly here, awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. And I speak this to your shame. And it's a shame for some, someone, a child of God, to tell you that and you once had the knowledge of God. God. But through carelessness, you lost it. So it's a shame when, when God's servant tell you that you do not have the knowledge of God. That there is darkness in you. you know, when, when a child of God tell you that and not telling you that because they joy, have joy in telling you that. It hurts them to even tell you. It, it's, it's, it hurt them to even have to tell you that because it shouldn't be. That's why I said I speak this to your shame. It's a shame. It's a shame. 35. But someone will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Mm. You see, when you listen to another voice that does not speak or bring the word of God, and you get confused, you will start asking foolish questions. You start asking foolish questions. Because they... Ask foolish question to Apostle Paul. How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? And 36 says, Foolish one. See? They're foolish. That's foolish question. What you sow is not made alive unless it, it dies. And what you sow, you do not sow that body that shall be but mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases, and to each seed its, its, its own body. 39. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh, a flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another of fish, and another of birds. Verse 40. There are also celestial bodies, which is heavenly bodies, and terrestrial bodies, which is earthly bodies. But the glory of the celestial heavenly is one, and the glory of the ter terrestrial earthly is another. 41. There, there is one glory of the sun, there's another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. See our earthly body, dear heart. It was born in, in corruption. Which was meant to die. Because of sin that came through. Father Adam. Okay. So there is one glory. No, no. So also, so the so also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption, but it is raised in incorruption. When you die in Christ Jesus, it is raised in incorruption. That means 
You don't have a flesh and blood body no longer. You have a resurrected body in incorrupt corruption. It cannot die. Cannot. For the three, it is sown in dishonor. So our physical body, remember, it was born or sown in dishonor. But for those who, who are in Christ Jesus and dies in Christ Jesus, it is raised in glory. Also the earthly body, it is sown in weakness. Those who are in Christ Jesus and dies in Christ Jesus, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. First, it is sown a natural body, but those who are in Christ Jesus and die in Christ Jesus, it is raised a spiritual body. So therefore, there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. 45. And so it is written, written. The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, who is Christ Jesus, became a life-giving spirit. For the six, however, the spiritual is not first, but the natural. We are born naturally first. And afterwards, the spiritual. That's when we receive Christ Jesus. Do you not know those who do not receive Christ Jesus, they are actually dead they have not come alive. Their spirit are dead. They have not come alive. That's the reason why you see so many movies about zombies. Because the devil know in the spirit realm that it's true. See, when you look at those movies, you laugh and think it's a joke. And it's funny. Because you think it's not true. But you don't realize demons are playing a trick on you. Trick on you so you never come to the true knowledge of truth. That there are zombies. Zombies are those who are disconnected from God. They are dead. Our spirit do not come made alive. Not until we receive Christ Jesus. That's the reason why dear heart many years ago. It literally felt like. I just woke up. Now. I, <laughs> now. I'm not talking about a physical sleep. This was spiritual. Because all the while I'm about working, doing my business, carrying on my affairs in this natural realm. But that one day I was in my house just meditating on things of God. Just happy, really. And it was, it was like I just woke up. And I remember, I said, oh, what? I said, I just woke up like I just... Come out of a coma. And all of a sudden, out of my mind, my belly came. Okay, K-Devil, I'm awoke now, and you are in trouble. And, and I thought about that, and the Lord told me, he said, you were asleep. You were disconnected from me, because he had given up on the Lord. Sometimes, dear heart, we give up on the Lord because he's not working as fast as we desire him to work, especially in the ministry that he gave us. That's why some of you in that, that ministry and God did not tell you it was time. Man told you it was time. And that's, that's why you're suffering, going through so much torment from the enemy. Because that ministry ain't time yet. Just like it wasn't time for Jesus' ministry. Jesus thought his ministry until he was 30. And he knew exactly what the Father wanted him to do. But he knew there was a time. So I got discouraged with the Lord and just gave up. And that was the worst thing that I could have ever done. And did not realize I got occupied with the affairs of this world. The thing I knew I was in that spiritual coma. And did not know I was in that spiritual coma until after I woke up. And that was the grace of God who woke me up. The grace of God who woke me up, dear heart. So again, the spiritual... Is not first, but the natural. And after war, after war, the spiritual. 
47 say the first man was of the earth Adam made of dust made of dust now the second man is the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven as was the man of dust so also are those who are made of dust that's why we made a dusty heart because we come through the loins of Adam that's why you shouldn't be bent on nationality. We all come from the same, from the same person. <laughs> you know, it just show you the creativity of God to make different shades of people. But we all originate again from the body now, from one man that was Adam. God is so creative. Create. He has unlimited wisdom to create all of us now different shades of colors <laughs> so the first man Adam was of the earth made of dust now the second man Christ Jesus the Lord from heaven as was the man of dust so also so also are those who are made of dust now when we receive Christ Jesus then as, as is the heavenly man, Christ Jesus, so also are those who are heavenly, just like Christ Jesus. We are spirit. And in the spirit, there's no such thing as gender. No such thing as gender. No such thing as race. No such thing as being uh, a slave. Because we all want in Christ Jesus. So again, dear heart, when a person receives and accepts Jesus Christ, their spirit is awakened to life in Christ. And when they have not received and accepted Jesus Christ, they are dead. They are zombies. They are zombies. In the spirit realm, it's like you see those moving, but zombies got their hands stretched out like somebody's controlling them. Well, that's, that's, that's how they are. They're disconnected from God. Demons are controlling them. And then on, all you can see is a person's body in this natural realm. That's why we, we need to look through our spiritual eyes in Christ Jesus. To go through that person's body and Jesus will show us what spirit a person is in, truly in obedience to. Then verses 49 say, And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. See, we need to bear Christ Jesus' image. We don't have his Im 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 image outwardly. We have his characteristics on the inside of us. But we don't look like him on the outside because we still in this flesh and blood body. But we shall be resurrected as Jesus Christ was resurrected. When we take off this flesh and blood body, body of mortality, and put on our spiritual body like Christ Jesus, heavenly body like Christ Jesus. Okay? Fifty says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood, see, cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. See, this flesh and blood body cannot inherit the kingdom of God. No, it's going to take our heavenly bodies. And there's a day the Father have a sign. The resurrection day of the dead is a day that he assigned where we take off this body of corruption to put on incorruption. To take off this mortal flesh and blood body and put on a body of immortality. So that we can live eternally in the kingdom of God. 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. You know, and, and Jesus Christ, by his spirit, have made known this mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. See? We shall not all sleep. Now, there are going to be those... When, when the Father says it's time and Jesus come back here, there are going to be those, dear Lord, that would, would have never died. Because right at that moment, they're going to be resurrected. 
That's why the Apostle Paul said, let me tell you a mystery. We should not all sleep. Now, you and I might not be one of them. Now, bodies may die and be buried, and our spirit soul go to the Lord and wait for that resurrection day. But when that resurrection day comes, there will be those who are in Christ Jesus who's not going to die. They're just going to quickly be changed according to the scripture here. He said, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We all going to be changed. Those who have gone before, those who have already died in Christ, and those who at that moment, who are still alive on earth, going to be changed. So in either case, you know, we all might not sleep, but we all will be changed. And 52 say, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Quickly. I mean, this thing will happen fast. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we, we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the sand that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a song. I wish someone would, would, would put a put a um put some um tune or music to the verses because this actually is a song. It's a song for the saints of God. Singing now on earth and we'll be singing then. So you who God have brought across to listen to this message. And you a singer, because <laughs> I'm not a singer. You don't have to be a writer, a songwriter, but a singer. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to sing it. Um, let me see. Starting with, let me see. I look for some. Yeah, starting with verses 51. Starting with verses 51. 51 and go all the way to uh, 57 so 51 through 57 just sing it and uh, record it and email it to me <laughs> at pastor at howshalom .org. that's a beautiful song encouraging song song that give you hope Give you hope and faith in things to come. Praise his holy name. And in verse 58 say, Therefore, now after hearing all of this, after hearing the word of God, after hearing the Holy Spirit speaking to us expressly, the Apostle Paul says in 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Glory, 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 glory. That, that, that gives me great encouragement. Thank you, Lord. Knowing this truth, that we shall be resurrected. We shall take off mortality and put on immortality. We shall take off cor corruption and put on incorruption because of Christ Jesus. Then death, victory, is destroyed and follow up. Because it has been destroyed. Because there will be no such thing as death. No such thing as even tears. No sicknesses and death rings on tears. No such thing. All of that will be done away with. But in the meantime, dear heart, we who are still breathing on this earth now, the Lord continue to encourage us by His Spirit. 
that would be steadfast and immovable. Stand on your holy faith in God's word. What the Holy Spirit have taught you. The truth he have taught you in his word. Hold on to it. Don't give ear to seducing spirit. They have demon spirit that seduces. And who do they use? They use human beings. Your fellow brethren. Who is half-heartedly seeking God. Carelessly walking on this earth. Those are the ones that seducing spirit use to seduce you. And they seducing your hearing. Now I know when you think seducing spirit. The, those spirits are trying to seduce to get your body to have sexual intercourse with you. No. Seducing spirit sub first seduces your hearing. Gradually win you over as you listen to what they tell you. So be immovable, steadfast, and always doing the work of the Lord. Always doing the work of the Lord. Always to your heart. Always doing something for the Lord. Singing songs in your heart, making melody in your heart. That is still considered to be doing the work of the Lord. Being at peace with your with your brother, with your sister, that is working for the Lord. I know we think working for the Lord is that you got to work in a ministry. No, dear heart. Uh-uh. Some, but most, no. The work of the Lord is you acting and reacting the very same way your Lord and Savior Jesus acts and reacts. That's the work of the Lord. And at the same time, you always know that your work is not in vain. It's not in vain. No matter how big or small, your work for the Lord is not in vain. So don't faint. Continue to, to keep your trust, your faith in the Lord. And meditate on what He says. Because the Holy Spirit is always speaking expressly. Praise the living God. Father, I just want to thank you for your word today. It's been great enlightening, enlightenment and encouragement to our souls. Thank you, Father, that you want us to continue to keep our minds stayed on you. Not on the problems of this world, of this earth, but keep our minds stayed on you. Because our hope is in you. And we just thank you for keeping us until that day of redemption. We glorify you and magnify you always. We exalt your name forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So remember, dear, what this is Evangelist King, Pastor at House Shalom, where we simply build a peaceful house for God's glory. You can tune in to Holy Ghost for our talk. My broadcast every Monday, Friday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. By calling our listener number 415-325-0729. Or visit our website at howshalom.org slash radio. Or download our free mobile apps. Go to thechildrensmite.org slash free apps. And you can download um, Deliverance TV. And also Shalom Shalom Radio. App, and that it will have um, Shalom Shalom Radio on both those apps. Praise the living God. Also be sure to visit our website at www.deliverance.center so that you can stay updated on our meeting date, time, and location. Okay? Because the Holy Spirit is always seeking those who truthfully, spiritually want to serve the Lord. We follow their heart, their soul, which is their mind, their will, and emotion, and with their body. So if you know you're in need of deliverance, then dear heart, God has led you to the right place. So you just, again, go to www.deliverance.center to get the information on how to attend our meetings and when and what date and location. And you come on out. 
and let the Holy Spirit set you totally free through his servant. Praise God. So dear heart, stay blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Shalom.